I am your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. This is a rather long video, but it will change your life. There are specific people I will mention their cases, and there are specific prayers you will pray at the end of this video. And I believe God that those prayers will come to pass in the name of Jesus. I am not the typical prayer, prayer pastor, but we must pray. We must pray without season. We must pray in all seasons. I want to take my bearing from John chapter 5 from verse 1 and I want you to pay attention if you won't listen to the end please don't just discontinue and don't comment you must listen to the end John chapter 5 from verse 1 after this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went to Jerusalem and there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, wildered, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Let me illustrate, let me elucidate and expand on each of these words. There was a feast in Jerusalem. Jerusalem means city of peace or shalom, which means wholesome peace and contentment. Here was a city that was supposed to be a city of contentment, shalom, peace, wellness, wholeness. And there was a feast celebration with multitudes of people coming to Jerusalem. But there was somewhere near the sheep market where people come to buy sheep for this celebration. But there was a pool called Bethesda, where a multitude, in one of the Bibles I have, yes, this is in these Bibles, a multitude of people. So there was a multitude coming to celebrate, but a multitude of another class that cannot take part in this celebration in the city of Jerusalem, where the temple of God was located where people come to see God, but here we are a group of people excluded, and they were of the following impotent folks. What is impotent? Uh, impotence, the inability to rise to functionality, inability to rise to functionality. There are people listening to me now. You are impotent in quotes. You can't rise to functionality. You have not risen to expectation. You have not been able to perform your role in life. You have not been functionally efficient. When I mean efficient, functionally productive, effective. There was an Assemblies of God church where somebody came to preach at her back and um, no, I can't remember exactly, but there was a church in Abba where a guest preacher came who was also a member of that church before he became an evangelist and uh, he said if your husband is dead, please come outside. Don't mind my Igbo. It's been long I left there. And one woman whose husband was in the church came forward. And the guest speaker said, 
Him ne kubo, ndi di nga wana wun puta mezi. What I'm saying, those whose husbands are dead, please come outside. Abu digi dindu, gani me church. If your husband is alive, go into the, go back to the congregation. The woman still stood there, and her husband was in church. And the man said, Oya, Abu digi, is this one not your husband? The woman said, Amaram, Amaram, I know what I'm doing. Ah, ah. The man, the preacher was surprised. Oh, yeah. Oh, bo, dig. He says, Is this not your husband? The woman said, Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She waved her hand like this. Oh, yeah. Or didn't do. Or didn't do. Is this one alive? Is this one alive? She was waving at her husband. Is this one alive? That man is impotent. When a woman assesses you with her hand like this, up and down, know that you are finished. Or assesses you from side to side, know that you are finished. Impotent. When you can't play the role you are supposed to play as a child, impotent. You can't play the role you are supposed to play as a husband, impotent. You can't play the role you are supposed to play as a child, impotent, incompetent. So they were impotent. And then in some Bibles it says paralyzed. There are two types of paralysis. You have flaccid paralysis and you have spat, spast, spastic paralysis. Spastic paralysis is when there is a disconnection between the brain and the spinal cord, when in a spinal cord injury, you will, the, 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 you will, the, the person is there. Suddenly you see an involuntary movement of the hand or of the leg. Somebody who has spastic paralysis in terms in the spirit realm, you, you want to make some moves, but there are no real moves. You, you are seen to be trying to be active and busy. And you are not going anywhere. You are not meeting functionality. You are not meeting expectation. Then there is the flaccid paralysis. Flaccid paralysis is paralysis at the um, but, um, spinal cord level. When you raise the hand, the hand falls down. You raise the hand, the hand falls down. It can also happen when there is a injury to the brain, when the person has stroke, can't. There are some of you, particularly those of you who have rich fathers, who have mothers that care about you, some of you who are children of the elite. There are some of you living in the diaspora when they raise you up. Some of you have children who you will help, they never stand. And those of us in Africa here, there are some of you who are flaccid paralysis. When they send money to you from overseas, give you help, give you employment, help you in Nigeria, whatever you put your hand, that is flaccid paralysis. Can't, you can't walk. And then it says there are those who were blind. Blind. No vision. No vision. And there is color blindness where you can't distinguish between uh, amber and red and green. You can't see danger ahead. You're always getting into trouble. And then there is the ones with, uh, uh, um, you can't see far. Short-sightedness. You can't see far. You can't, some of them, you can't see opportunities near you. You can't harness opportunities near you. Blind. The worst form of blindness is when you don't have vision. You don't know where you are going to. You don't know what, what you want to do. Blind. And then my Bible here says, halt. You know the meaning of halt? Been stopped in life. 
You are just there. You are not. You are not progressing. Stopped in life. Halt. Stopped in life. You remember the story of when I was rushing to Potako to go and preach, and a policeman told me, "Stop." And then the young man came later after I've wasted time. So, God, what are you doing here? I said, a policeman told me to stop. Where is the policeman that told you to stop? I said, he has gone. He said, and you are still here while the policeman who told you to stop has gone away? Who stopped you? What stopped you? Where did you stop? Then the next thing is those who are withered. You go to old, old student association meetings when you see some of your classmates who withered. No freshness. No life. Just there. Existing but not living. No impact. No attractiveness. Who withered. And then there are those and all kinds of people waiting for the moving of the water. Let me quickly, it says, in that pool, all these multitude there were waiting for the water to be stirred by an angel. Periodically, an angel came into that water and stirred the pool. And the presence of that messenger of God will put healing virtue into the water. And then people will scamper to enter the water. And so, they are waiting for the stirring of the water. S-T-I-R-O-R-I-N-G, stirring of the water. And they were staring at the water. All their attention, expectation, on the pool of the water. Any activity they did, they didn't go too far from the pool. So they were limited. Their focus was on probability. And that's what we are teaching you people in church. We, you do this and this, will do this, you do that and that, will do that and that. Fine. Good. Instead of focusing on Jesus, they didn't have that knowledge. They focused on tradition, routine, regimentation, focusing. And there was one man there. Just imagine all this celebration going on. The people dare not remove their eyes from the water. In their perception, that might be the day the angel might come. Have you, do you have somebody that all your hope is based on that person? Your a woman, your your a wife, your hope is based on husband. Children, your hope is based on father. Father, your your whole hope is based on children, based on wife. The day God removed me from that was the day I started living well. Salary, retirement benefits. If I can just get this visa. If I can just get this job. No. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And then Jesus realized, came to the notice of Jesus, that there was a man who has been there for 38 years. 38 years. Imagine the man went there, assuming the man went there at 18, he will be 56. If he went there at 28, he will be older than I am, 66. When did they take him there? Those who took him there got tired and they went to face their own lives. Listen, I had a car. The car did not start and I called some young men to help me push the car. They pushed it once, pushed it twice, pushed it three times. Pushed it, I think, the first time. And one of the boys told me, Oga, go and service your car. And he left me. Parked the car somewhere. People can push you, assist you, 
Somebody has been begging, 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 begging me money. When I look at her picture with all the coral beads on her body, she's more, she's better dressed than my wife. She has no reason to beg. In fact, we had to expel one pastor from our group, my WhatsApp group. He just selected those with foreign numbers and started begging them money. And it is against our rule in our WhatsApp group. You don't beg people money. You don't chase, you don't do amorous relationships. You don't introduce businesses there. It's against our rules. People came there to learn to become billionaires, to become better Christians, to become entrepreneurs. And we expelled him, removed him from the group. You begging me money. How long will begging help you? Since you've been begging. I'm not, I'm not an emotional person. I'm not sentimental. I'm a typical businessman. I'm not sentimental. I circumcise my children, my male children. I circumcise them. They are crying. I'm cutting off the prepuce. I take my wife's delivery. She's shouting. I'm telling her, push! And she insists that I take her delivery. If the baby is coming out and I need to bring that baby out, I need to give it uh, an incision, an episiotomy, I do it. And then I stitch it. I don't, I'm not an emotional person. I will not have reached here. The only time I get emotional is when I see excellence. When I see a Nigerian, an African, somebody do well, I shed tears. But not, uh, no, 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 count me out of that. That's why uh, I had to leave the management of the school to my wife and my daughter because I'm a hard man. But you cross the line, I, I strike. Because that is the problem with Africa. That is a problem with the typical black man. I don't tolerate that nonsense. Even with my children, they know that. Love is not pampering stupidity. Sometimes you chastise those you love. So, um, they were there. But Jesus realized that one man has been there for 38 years. And those who pushed him there and put him there had abandoned him. They need to live their lives. You can't blame them. 38 years. And when Jesus knew that, he went to meet the man. Do you want to be made whole? Jesus didn't ask him the, whether do you want to be healed. There is a difference between healing and being made whole. I will not explain it here because I want to communicate with you. If you want to know the difference between healing and being made whole, send me a message on plus two, three, four, seven, zero, five, two, one, three, six, seven. 6 3, and I will answer you. Do you want to be made whole? He said, Do you want to be made? Do you want to be healed? And then the Bible says, The impotent man, the man who has not been able to rise to occasion, fulfill functionality and expectation, who has been uh, flaccid, sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Number one, in this situation, the man had nobody. Remember, I told you his people had gone and left him. Number two, he did not answer the question I have no man. There's an Igbo song. Ah, they give me K. Ah, Jeremy we K. E we give me me. Ah, Jeremy we me. E we give me madule. Ah, Jeremy madu. I can't. I can't uh, remember the full name. But you um, chi chi. So he said, I, I am not strong. I don't have strength. I don't have breath. And I don't have any person. Please, God, 
I don't, I can't. Here was this man, nobody, no person, no strength. But he didn't even answer the question well. And he does not know Jesus Christ. He was a sinner because Jesus told him at the end, say, go back and sin no more. Then Jesus said, rise, take up thy bed and walk. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Listen, you need to have interest in what God wants to do for you. Because it is the desires of the righteous that God will grant. You need to contribute your quota before God will act. You heard my wife's video when we went to lay the foundation of my son's building. So until you step into the Red Sea, it does not divide. You need to, you need to move. You need to take some steps after this message. You need to take an initiative. You need to be hungry for progress. You need to be hungry for excellence. You need to be hungry to do well. You need to be hungry for wealth. Don't criticize wealthy people. Don't criticize people who are doing well. One lousy fellow saw my European daughter-in-law and said, uh, "What? where is the honor for father and mother and this? Boy, I had always wanted to have a global family. I've always wanted to have children all over, grandchildren all over the world. And that girl is a medical doctor, a, a consultant, a, a, a cardiologist. She, she, she's been on two years maternity leave paid for, paid. Her government gives her one weekend to spend with my son in a hotel free. My grandson will go to university to PhD level free. My grandson earns an allowance every month from the government. At the age of 18, he can travel around the country free. And you there, you are talking rubbish that you don't know. Some people just come to social media to disgrace themselves. Disgrace them. You comment on what you don't know. Comment on what you don't know. So, do you want to be made whole? You must have a desire. I'm living the life I had wanted to live. There are 10 toilets in this building. Each, eight rooms. Each room has its own building. It has its own um, toilet inside. I have 24 hours electricity. Regular water supply. I have enough space to park cars. I don't need to go to work today because I had planned it from the age of 23, 24. Do you have a desire? You have to have this desire for excellence. Don't follow African Pentecostalism of waiting for Dr. Poke, G.O., God's generals, to lay hands on you, to do this, put anointing oil on you before you create your own vision. You are your greatest prophet. The life I am living are the things I told my wife, told my children, told myself and told those who were listening to me that this is the kind of life I wanted to live. Somebody made a lousy comment that I am very boastful. I am not. <laughs> I know who I am and I know what I want. Right from childhood, my parents taught me to be like this. My mother taught me to be like this. The desires of the righteous shall be granted. If you don't speak it, you don't receive it. The power of life and death is in the tongue. A short mouth is a short destiny. A heart without desire cannot aspire and cannot perspire and therefore you cannot acquire. There has to be an aspiration, a desire in your mind. Stop this timidity, primitiv primitivity, docility, and hypocrisy. Many Christians are hypocrites. They like good things, but they pretend as if they don't like them. And then they get angry when they see somebody who is doing well. 
I celebrate this week. I've dedicated it to celebrating Africans and Nigerians. I posted a video of the wife of the Sierra president talking in America. I've been posting videos of Nigerians who have done well. You have videos of your countrymen in Africa and people of this color. We must celebrate this color. We must elevate this color. We must desire to build nations where this color is in the majority, build them and create excellence. We must celebrate this color in the United States, in the UK, in the Caribbeans, all over the world. Anywhere you go with this color, know that you have a duty to make a mark and make a meaning. Don't complain about racism. There's a way you will excel. You shut them up. You shut their mouths up. So Jesus said, pick up your mouth and go. And the man, he, and verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole. He took up his bed and walked. And on that same day was the Sabbath. You see, I, I have problems with people. Is this scriptural? Is this this? Is this the, was it scriptural for Jesus to heal on the Sabbath day? No. That was it scriptural for the man to carry his bed on the Sabbath day? No. When they questioned him, why are you carrying your bed? He said, the man who healed me said I should carry my bed and go. It is they who are led by the Spirit of God that are the sons of God. Not those who quote scriptures anyhow. The Bible says that the whole creation is earnestly tiptoeing, looking for, in anticipation, the manifestation of the sons of God, those who carry the chromosomal nature of God, the attitude of God, and the power of God, and the love of God for humanity, so that people can thank God every day because of them. Most people, most church people are very wicked, quote scriptures to do evil. That man was a sinner, but Jesus had his said, H E. -S -E S E D. If you don't know the meaning of her said, send me a message on my WhatsApp page. You will understand the meaning of her said. H E S E D. And the man was made whole. I told you there's a difference between healing and being made whole. Jesus broke protocol. Listen, there are principles. There are processes, there are practices, there are precedents in law. You win your cases by citing precedents. In governance, there are precedents. In the parliament, precedents. But there are also protocols, routine, regimentation, regularity that you must follow. In management, Scalar management, there's something called throwing in the bridge. And that's what the United States did not do before 9-11. Some of the secret service, um, service bodies in America knew of an imminent attack. The same thing with this last attack on Israel. But protocol, you move from F to E, E to D, D to C, C to B, then B to A, then you now cross over to the other department and start from F again. Before you know it, crisis has taken place. Israel was warned about the likelihood of Hamas attack. There was information that people were planning an attack against the United States, but protocol. And the principle of management called throwing in the bridge. When F tells E and E tells D, instead of D going to C, it can put a bridge across to D in the other department that can act by, that, by doing that you have broken protocol and saved time, expenses, and situations. When there is a ceremony, 
particularly in Nigeria, we know how to waste time. We are idol worshippers of titles. Um, the chairman of the occasion, a right reverend, left reverend, center reverend, backward reverend, upward and downward reverend, doctor, double doctor, Apoki, MBBS Ibadan, BSC, B, uh, MPA Delso, school certificate, government college, UK. <laughs> higher school, federal government college, worry, house captain, national house B. They will quote and quote my birth certificate number, stupid waste of time. But you see, when they have wasted so much time introducing traditional rulers, some one smart guy comes when the time is fast spent. He says, All protocols observed, standing on existing protocols. I so Jesus got there, saw this man, knew that this man had wasted 38 years. He said, all protocols observed. Sabbath, stand aside. This illness, you are going. This man is being healed and made whole. And you see, the man was made whole. Religious people are very dangerous people. They are the ones who, who crucified Jesus Christ. But elders of the church are wicked people sometimes. Said, why are you carrying your mat on the Sabbath? Hey, wait, wait, wait. You couldn't help this man when he was down. You couldn't help him in his situation because you too, you were looking for your, your own miracle. Why? But the question I want to ask, many of those interviewing him, didn't they need healing of their own? A reasonable person will have said, who healed you? Take me to him. Let me heal, let him heal me too. But no, most people who criticize you, who make negative comments on your posts and on your successes, don't want to be like you. They want you to remain like them so that they can have an excuse for their failures. When I see people make negative comments about people, I go to check their records. A lot of them have nothing to offer. Somebody gave birth to a baby. You say it resembles another person. Then what's your business? What's your business? What is your business for God's sake? Why don't you live your life? Ah, you let do chair. This done this. Ah, live your life. My PA, uh, Reverend Abraham, says that he doesn't discuss Tinibu in his house. That's some of you are just waiting for people to die. Obituary, it has happened, ROIP, this, this, that, that. Love, don't you want your own life to change? Dr. Apoki is so busy thinking about himself. I don't have time to be jealous of another person. I don't have time to gossip somebody. My wife does not have that time. She's gone. Left this house. Gone to do her business. Gone, gone supervise her son's business. No, I don't have that time. Don't have that time. According to Panara, no time. No time. <laughs> so, I, they were questioning the man. The man said, I don't know the man who told me to carry my mat, healed me. Listen and listen well. I said this before. God did not take permission for some, from somebody to create you. Even your father and your mother didn't know you were going to be formed in your mother's womb. It is you are God's workmanship. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God does not need consultants for him to perform a miracle in your life, for him to change your situation. He breaks protocols. He broke protocols for Ruth, a Moabites, whose descendant is not supposed to enter the temple until the 10th generation. But when God's love and purpose and his said is so strong, so strong, it breaks protocols. And Ruth became the great grandmother of David in the fourth generation, the rich 10th generation, and she produced a king. Same thing with Rahab. He broke protocols. All the walls of Jericho sank. The portion of a harlot did not sink. Hey! 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the portion of a harlot did not sink. And Boaz married Salmon, most likely one of those spies. And from there, Boaz came out. And from there, the line of Jesus Christ came out. I serve a God that breaks protocols. And the man was made whole on his Sabbath. I am who I am, not because of excellence. I can be brilliant, but I have a lot of flaws. I've had protocols broken for my sake. There are some I cannot mention. Two in particular I cannot mention. Genetic protocol broken for my sake. I am AS. My wife is AS. We have three AS children and one, S, one uh, AA child. One of a sabi person sent me a message. He says, is it not possible that those children are not your children? It is a lie. They are my children. They all look alike. They look like my wife. They look like me. And my wife is not of this generation and has not done adultery. I know her. So I have had protocols broken. I have never been to a Bible school, but I lecture in Bible schools. Most of the things I teach, I lectured in the university, entrepreneurship, without studying entrepreneurship in the university, without having an interview, without doing an interview, without writing an application. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There was a place I went to speak. I was not in the schedule. I did not know who called me. I did not know that activity was on. But God put my name in their heart and they called me and I spoke and they paid me heavily. A lot of the things I've seen in my life of recent are against protocol. If you continue at this rate, at this pace, in this space, at this place, with the people you are working with, with the way you are going. You cannot meet your mates. You cannot reach where you are supposed to be. You cannot fulfill your destiny. I'm not telling you to compare yourself with people, but compare yourself with where you are supposed to be. Therefore, you need to pray, God, break protocols for my sake. Push me to put in effort, but amplify my efforts. God, I need wholeness beyond healing. I need wholeness. God, have her said. Her said. I need her said. I know I don't qualify for some of the things. <coughs> Excuse me. I know it might not be the right time. I know it might be the Sabbath day. Contrary to scriptures. Contrary to expectations. Contrary to the rules and the laws, Lord, do something for me. I need acceleration and I need prompting, I need elevation. Pray those prayers today and more. And I'm waiting for your testimonies. I'm forgetting something. Can't remember it. I am your friend, Dr. Charles App. Okay. Listen carefully. Send me a message on plus two, three, four, seven, zero, five, two, one, three. For the following reasons. Number one, there is an online seminar I am organizing on the first of uh, May first. It's a public holiday globally. Send me a message on that number. I will send you the flyer to register for an online seminar so that you can prepare your life very early to enjoy aging. I'm 65. I look fresh. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm living the kind of life I've always wanted to live. 
in Nigeria here. And I will send you the flyer and you will register for the seminar. God bless you. Bless you. And I have properties for sale. Large expanse of land for sale that I bought. God bless you.